Hi, my name is Rob Heaton, and I'm a security engineer at Stripe on the detection infrastructure team. And my team is responsible for building the tools that security analysts use to detect and stop bad guys. I'd like to start with a short story. Last year, we started rolling out OS Query to Stripe's server fleet. While we were designing our deployment, we spoke to some other teams within Stripe's security organization, and we asked them if they had any thoughts on some of our plans. They went away, they talked amongst themselves, and then they came back and let us know that actually they very much did. Our colleagues, of course, absolutely understood what we were trying to do. Uh, they acknowledged all of the wonderful features that all of us here know and love about OS Query, apart from all of those of you who are spies from Go Audit at scale. However, this team pointed out that we were, in the nicest possible way, proposing to install what is essentially a Trojan on every server at Stripe. This thing can exfiltrate almost any piece of data from any machine it runs on, they pointed out. And, and some of the scarier tables, they can, they can remotely control servers. And yes, yes, we said, isn't it fantastic? So next we spoke to Stripe's reliability team. We already run OS Query on all of our employee laptops, and it's been very useful, and that's why we want to put it on all of our servers as well. However, this laptop deployment is giving us something of a mild PR problem with OS Query. And as you may have seen, some tasks cause OS Query to get a little CPU hungry and cause people's laptops to sound like they're trying to fly to the moon. We've tried to be responsive and we've tried to tune our parameters and we made a little Slack bot to give guidance to people who were complaining about OS Query D. But people do still get grumpy when their battery dies prematurely. But anyway, the reliability team, they also understood exactly what we were trying to do, but they had some concerns of their own. Is OS Query that thing that runs on our laptops that they started? And yes, yes, but don't worry, it's perfectly safe, we replied. Okay, well, they continued. This thing, it runs on every server at Stripe, right? And including all of the mission critical ones, uh, it runs as root, it performs a potentially large amount of computation, it grabs a lot of information, you can update its configuration from a remote fleet manager that completely bypasses all of our normal change management infrastructure. Yes, we said, isn't it fantastic? So mitigating these inconvenient, but perfectly valid uh, security and re reliability concerns made my team's lives a little more awkward for a couple of months. Uh, but I am confident that all of the mitigations that we've put in place will also make our lives rather much calmer and more stable for many years to come. The stronger the safety guarantees that you can give yourself, the faster you can move in the long term. And as I always say, just because you're paranoid, that does not mean that you won't cause a ruinous incident if you don't take proper precautions. So today I'm going to go in some, uh, in some more detail about some of the safety considerations that we at Stripe contemplated when deploying OS Query and how we mitigate, uh, how we have mitigated them and how we will mitigate them in the future. And just to be clear, all of the things that we'll talk about now, they're all solvable um, given some time and effort. And some of the concerns, they might not even apply to you, or maybe some of them might technically apply to you, but you decide that you just aren't concerned about them. And as always with these things, it's always up to you to understand your own organization uh, and to understand and decide your own risk tolerance. So let's start by talking about the security of your OS Query deployment. As we all know, OS Query is an excellent security tool, but all, to all tools expose attack surfaces. And of course, security tools are no exception. Most OS Query deployments consist broadly of two parts. The first is the OS query agents that run on machines and they slurp up data from them. And then the second is the fleet manager that these agents send their data up to. So let's start with a boring, but a big and important concern about this fleet manager. You may be familiar with the principle of least privilege, which states that any system or component should only be able to access the data and resources necessary in order for it to carry out its job. And this means that you don't centralize data or privileges in one place, because this way you minimize the fallout if one component of your system happens to get compromised. This means that you don't give servers access to databases they don't need. You don't give credentials to employees uh, that those employees don't need. And then if you're a revolutionary fighter, you make sure that revolutionary fighters don't know anything about other revolutionary fighters outside of their immediate revolutionary cell. However, the whole point of the OS Query Fleet Manager is that it decentralizes a lot of important and sometimes sensitive information in a single place. And this is what makes OS Query so useful. But it also means that if the Fleet Manager is compromised, then the attacker gets their hands on a massive, incredible trove of data in a single stroke. So do, do you have secrets in your command line arguments? Well, select star from processes, we'll just grab all of those. 
Uh, and what about in your environment variable as well? I think select star from process M should uh, do the job to grab all those secrets instead. Okay, fine, that's, that's scary, but this is just reading data, right? At least if an attacker compromises the fleet manager, they can't use that and they can't use OS query to pivot or say directly mess with some servers, right? That's actually wrong, uh, in general at least. Because one very useful feature of OS query is the ability to run what you might call real-time queries on a host. Uh, and this means that instead of relying on potentially stale data uh, that the host periodically pushes up to the fleet manager, you can instead use the fleet manager to run queries directly on the host. And these queries, they look like SQL, and indeed OS query uses the SQLite engine to evaluate them. Um, however, it doesn't actually use SQLite for data storage. Instead, much of the data in these real-time queries is generated and retrieved on the fly by reading it directly from the system. For example, on Linux, if you run select star from processes, then the OS query agent retrieves data about running processes synchronously by reading the proc file system. So why does any of this matter? Well, several of these virtual tables, as they're called, they're not used for retrieving data at all. Instead, they're used as a kind of a quirky command line interface telling the agent to execute what is essentially a full-on active command. For example, if you are selecting from the curl table, which is a standard OS query table, this actually causes a real life HTTP request to be issued. Uh, and then the results of that HTTP request are returned to the cooler. And this means that a compromise of the fleet manager doesn't just mean that the attacker gets read access to existing data, they can also use these real-time queries and tables like curl to manipulate the server actively. And for example, they could use, say, the curl table to send HTTP requests to any, any internal service that the target server uh, has access to. For example, if we think about an AWS environment, one particularly interesting service for an attacker to target and have a poke at is what's called the AWS metadata service. This is an internal AWS managed service, and one of its jobs is to dish out temporary credentials, which allow servers to assume different roles, giving them different permissions. So what the attacker could do is ask this metadata service for a set of temporary credentials, and then read them out of the response that they get back from uh, their curl query. And in fact, some of these credentials uh, will in fact work from the public internet, uh, which means that the attacker can use them from the comfort of their own home, from their own sofa, to, for example, just exfiltrate all of your data from S3. When I was practicing this talk, an imaginary heckler yelled, ah, but Rob, you can just use your OS query config to disable these power features. Uh, and so that you, uh, you select from the curl table and then OS query, the agent just says, nope, OS query, uh, the curl table is disabled at this point. And that's true enough, but that's, uh, that actually just sets me up for my next point. You can certainly configure your OS query agents, and you can certainly use this query, uh, this sorry, this config to disable different features and tables. But that's not the full story. Because one common and convenient way to manage OS query configuration is to set your config via this centralized fleet manager. Then uh, clients pull down their config from the fleet manager, like this. However, this approach means that if an attacker has access to the fleet manager, which we're assuming they do, then they can also update your config to re-enable all of these powerful tables and features that they have needed in order to go about their devious work and commit these, uh, these devious curl requests. You can reduce the attack surface area here uh, by restricting which user accounts have which, which user accounts have which permissions to update different agent configs. But since someone somehow has to be able to update your configs, you can't lock this attack vector down completely. While we're on the subject, how about another more scorched earth attack via this, uh, this vector? First, the attacker could update the OS query config to disable the watchdog that kills the agent if it consumes too much CPU. Then second, the attacker could create, say, 10,000 scheduled queries that hammer the most computationally expensive tables available on each host. And then finally, the attacker could turn on file integrity monitoring on every file on every host and this should probably be enough to cause some extreme inconvenience for your entire fleet as every host uh, spends all of its CPU resources uh, processing these queries and processing this file integrity monitoring. The cast iron, if awkward mitigation, is to not configure your OS query agents via the fleet manager at all, but to instead do your configuration via a good old fashioned config file stored on your server's disk. If you use config files in this way, then an attacker with access to the fleet manager can't re-enable tables anymore because the agent doesn't listen to the fleet manager for their config anymore. However, if you do things this way, then you will have to manage these config files using a separate tool like Puppet, 
which will take, and updating it in that way will take rather more effort than just a single click in a nice, single nice UI. So these are some of the security concerns uh, that we thought about when designing our OS query deployment. However, as I'm sure we all know, when you're operating at scale, it's arguably just as likely that you break your own stuff, your own systems, as a baddie breaks all of that stuff for you. So I'd like to talk a bit now about reliability. OS query does a lot of work. And sometimes in order to do this work, it needs a lot of memory and especially CPU. Remember all of that grumbling about OS Query D running on my colleagues' laptops. And this means that if you're on whatever your organization calls your, calls your version of my team, you're going to be responsible for running a complex agent on possibly every host in your organization's fleet. And this means you probably want to make sure that you've configured this agent properly and that you've added safeguards and response tools in case there's some sort of emergency. Because if you do the maths, a 0.01% failure rate of a massive number of servers is still a pretty big number that's going to keep you awake a lot at night. The first and simplest most uh, line of reliability defense is OS Query's own watchdog. The watchdog is a process that watches the main OS Query D agent process. And then when the agent consumes more than a certain threshold amount of resources for a threshold period of time, so maybe 30% of CPU for 20 seconds, the watchdog will kill the agent and then deny list whatever scheduled query caused that resource hogging for the next 24 hours or so. And this is a great start. This is very useful. And you might reasonably decide that the watchdog is enough for you. Um, if you do this, that's fine. But you, you will want to make sure that you record somehow when the watchdog shoots a worker and then possibly alert when the rate of murders exceeds a particular threshold so that you can investigate and see why your deployment is acting up. If you're paranoid, you might want to add extra lines of defense. So for example, Linux C groups. C groups allow you to tell the operating system to only allow a particular process to consume a threshold level of CPU or some other type of system resources. And this is a nice hard OS level constraint that will catch you if you uh, ever fail to, if you ever misconfigure your watchdog or if your watchdog ever falls asleep somehow. And of course, whatever approaches you take, you should just apply generic good engineering principles like you do every day. Before your original rollout, schedule some game days and game day your system by inducing failures into them deliberately. Maybe schedule thousands of scheduled queries that cause OS Query D to go nuts, and then see if your watchdog does what you expect. See if your system reacts in the way that you'd hoped. Of course, you can't reasonably hope to game day OS Query's interactions with every service at your organization individually, uh, so you want to run a gradual rollout. You want to have clear metrics to see how it's going, and you want to have pre-tested rollback procedures and runbooks that help you know what to do. And even once that's all done, even once OS Query is, is humming along, it's running nicely on every one of your servers, uh, the fun has only just started. Because you need to maintain it, and you'll probably want to update it somehow. For example, how are you going to make sure that any new scheduled queries are safe and that they don't consume too many resources? And also, how are you going to distribute the agent binary to new mach machines? On the one hand, you might want to bake it as deep as possible into your machines, maybe into your base image, because this means that OS Query will start collecting data as soon as the machine starts up and as soon as the machine starts bootstrapping. This is nice because it means that you'll be able to catch bad guys who are messing with your bootstrapping process, who are messing with your computers uh, right at the start of their lives. On the other hand, baking the agent into your base images like this will make updating the agent rather more annoying and inconvenient. Since you can't just update uh, the agent and distribute that new version to all of your servers, instead you'll also have to figure out how to update your base images as well. And also, we've talked about this, but how are you going to deploy changes to your OS query config? Um, recall our earlier discussions of the trade-offs between convenience and safety. We talked a bit about security, but how you update your config also has reliability implications as well. Using the, the fleet manager to update your config is very convenient, but as we've discussed briefly, it gives you a bit of a backdoor change management process. This will be separate from everything else that your organization does for change management, and it will only apply to OS query, only to your stuff. So if we, if we think, uh, suppose your organization is, is in the middle of a, a code freeze or a massive giant incident, everything's on fire, everything's falling apart, all normal deploys have been locked, just to make sure that no one adds any extra instability to any part of the system. But since you've got your own deploy path, your own way of getting in changes to OS query, um, these deploy locks won't apply to you. Uh, you won't have your own, you, you won't have these tools from stopping you doing anything silly. You won't have any guardrails stopping you from doing anything problematic. And this could potentially cause some difficulties if you don't do anything to, uh, to deal with that. 
And whether this is a showstopper or just a little shoulder shrug depends on your organization's risk modeling and risk tolerance. Either way, whatever you do, you should at least make sure that any fleet manager driven updates get noted in some sort of durable paper trail somewhere. As I mentioned at the start, these are all solvable, answerable questions. You should just make sure to answer them ahead of time so you don't have to answer them at 3 a.m. when your fleet is compromised or everything's on fire and exploding. You want to understand your own threat models. They'll be different to mine. They'll be different to the person virtually sitting next to you. It's okay, of course, to decide to accept risks in return for a faster system or a simpler system or a faster rollout. But on the other hand, if you are feeling particularly paranoid like me, then please do get in touch. I'd love to talk more.